What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. Today, we're we'll reviewing The Batman. This one came out yesterday and was directed by Matt Reeves and stars Robert Pattinson as the Batman and Paul Dano as the Riddler. Now, before we start with that like button, subscribe to the post notification bell so you know if you're a video. Let's just start. Let's start talking about the good. So, all the actors and actions in this film are fantastic. Every single character, every single person in this film is phenomenal. Um, the opening sequence is fantastic. It is extremely tense. Um, and warning, there are spoilers in this video. So the opening sequence is the Riddler. He has the tape, just like from the trailer. He kills the mayor. He just hits him on the head and he's immediately dead. And right when that happened, I knew this film was going to be dark and very tense because that opening sequence alone, just by the score, it was very, very tense. Um, the Batman, of course, Robert Pattinson, great actor. Um, him as the Batman is phenomenal. Um, he's a great Batman for me. He's tied with Christian Bale. Uh, Michael Keaton will always be my favorite Batman just because of nostalgia. Um, but I love Michael Keaton as Batman. But Robert Pattinson, he's phenomenal as Bruce Wayne and Batman. Um, all the villains, including the Riddler, who's of course played by Paul Dano, uh, the Penguin, played by Colin Farrell, and uh, Carmine Falcone, played by John Turturro, they're awesome. All the villains in this film are awesome. Catwoman, I wouldn't really consider her a villain in this film. Um, I guess sort of an anti-hero, I guess you could say, because she is doing villain. She does villainous things in this film, um, but she does it for a reason. The other characters are just straight up terrible and terrible people, and the real villains of the film. So Catwoman, I wouldn't really consider her a villain. Um, the cinematography, which of course, because the shots, the cameras, the lighting, phenomenal. Matt Reeves knows how to make a superhero film and a dark one at that. Um, because just by the cinematography alone, like I said, the opening sequence, fantastic. The rest of the film is very unique. He doesn't use the same shot. Um, for emotional sequences, he doesn't use the same shot twice. And you can tell because this film has a lot, a lot of um, diversity in terms of the cinematography. The end, which I'll get to later, but the fight sequences and the action sequences, which of course I'll get to later, the camera work, the cinematography for those sequences are phenomenal. Um, Gotham looks awesome. Gotham is fantastic. Uh, Batman 1989 still has my favorite Gotham, and of course Batman Returns from 1992 still is my all-time favorite Gotham, but this film comes really, really close to my number one spot for the best-looking Gotham. Um, the action sequences are phenomenal. Matt Reeves did a great job filming the action sequences. You could see everything that was happening. Um, the car chase sequence, which is of course in the trailer with Batman and the Penguin, it's phenomenal. Um, that car ch chase sequence is a very long sequence, but it was long, it was riveting, it was entertaining, and it fit the film perfectly. Um, the first act of the film I thought was very well done. Um, now of course it introduced the characters, and I think it introduced them very, very well because I actually cared about the characters I was supposed to care about. Didn't like the characters I wasn't supposed to like, but I like obviously all the characters, but in terms of villainous roles, they played their characters to perfection. Um, the story is fantastic. Um, they could have messed up with the story in this film, which I I was a little hesitant on the story for this film because it looked fantastic. All the trailers look phenomenal. The story, I was a little hesitant on what they're actually going to do with this new Batman film. But it is fantastic. Um, you have riddles. There's a, It's basically a mystery film. Uh, Bruce Wayne becomes the Batman. He doesn't... Of course he is the Batman in this entire film. But by the end, he solidifies his role as the Batman. And it's awesome. Um, and it keeps you engaged throughout. I, I love mystery films. I like riddle films. But to put it with a Batman film... Now, I never saw any animated Batman films or anything like that. Um, I've only seen live action ones. But... I didn't think that it was going to work all that well, but for me, it was perfect. Um, and it is by far the darkest Batman film yet um, in terms of live action. And it's very, very dark, but it works perfectly. Um, Bruce and Alfred, who's of course played by Andy Serkis, their relationship is fantastic. Um, what he reveals to Bruce about his parents and all of that about his backstory was great. It was emotional, it was heartfelt, and it fit the film perfectly. Um, the second act of the film is very, very entertaining. And I think he enhances the um, the sort of tension of every sequence by the second act because the Riddler is still out there. He's still killing people. And 
the Batman, of course, has to solve all these riddles. By the second act of the film, he's already get, getting to go on these um, different adventures with um, Commissioner Gordon. And they're finding out who's behind all these, who's doing all of these, who's killing all these people. And I think it works perfectly. Um, the twists. Now, there are some great twists in this film with Carmine Falcone um, and Bruce's parents. Falcone had Bruce's parents killed. Um, of course, he didn't actually physically kill them, but he had them killed. And it works very well because Carmine Falcone, he wasn't really, for me anyway, he didn't seem like a big character in the Nolan trilogy. But this film alone, he is one of the biggest characters in this film, one of the um, main antagonists of the film. And I think it works very well because the backstory of Bruce Wayne is not um, that heavily involved in this film. It is, of course, in the film. Of course, Bruce's parents die and all that, but it's not the central focus of the film. That's not the central focus of how Bruce becomes Batman and all that stuff. Um, but knowing that Carmine Falcone has his parents killed adds that other level to the Batman where you, you kind of want to see him kill Carmine Falcone, but you kind of don't because, you know, he's Batman. Um, so I thought that worked very, very well. Um, Carmine Falcone's death, it was expected, but unexpected at the same time. Selena Kyle, of course, Catwoman, uh, played by Zoe Kravitz, who's phenomenal as Catwoman. She, and, um, she kills him. She kills Carmine Falcone in the film. And it works really, really well because of the dynamic between those two characters and the twist with those two characters and how um, their relationship is throughout the film. So I think it makes sense that Catwoman would be the one to kill him. Uh, so I thought it worked perfect. Um, the third act of the film is fantastic. The third act of the film is action-packed. Um, the story concludes in a way that is um, very, very well done, uh, very well concluded. And the third act of the film alone is, for, for me anyway, it is one of the standouts of this film. Usually for a Batman film, I don't really enjoy the third acts of a lot of the Batman films, except, of course, The Dark Knight, uh, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins, and... Um, Batman 1989 and Batman Returns. The rest of them, I don't really like the third act. But this third act made me very, very happy because it was action-packed. You have the Penguin, you have Batman, you have the Riddler, you have all those characters in the third act, and it's very, very fun. Um, and Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino is a fantastic composer. His score for this film is one of his best scores yet. Um, of course, I love his Star Trek score, his Jurassic World score. This one may be my favorite one of Michael Giacchino's score, either this one or Star Trek, but this one is on the level of the Star Trek score. Uh, the ending sequence, I thought it was great. Um, Bruce and Selena go in opposite directions on the motorcycle, and I think it works very, very well. Um, the post credit sequence, which is Barry Keoghan as the Joker, it was awesome. I cannot wait to see this character come back um, to the big screen. Barry Keoghan, great actor. Him playing the Joker, it was very, very creepy when you showed up, and it was awesome. Uh, that's all I'm going to have now to move on to the bad. Um, this is a minor, minor, minor issue. Uh, some sequences could have been condensed. I feel that it was just a bit too long. It could have been condensed, I guess, one or two minutes, um, or five minutes at least, with some parts in the second act. But other than that, this is a phenomenal superhero film. Uh, the Batman is, of course, a phenomenal superhero film. It's easily my second favorite Batman film, uh, right behind The Dark Knight, and I highly recommend it, and I'm going to give it to Batman. N A. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the post notification bell to be notified for every video. I'm Peter. Thank you for watching.